Hosea chapter 1. Now, Hosea is a book. Hosea means salvation. Put a J, J A or J E, in front of, Joseph, uh, of Hosea, you'll get Jehovah saves. You will get Joshua. You will get Jesus. J A J E is the prefix of Jehovah. Like Beth, B E T H, is house. Beth L L E L, God, the house of God. It was written around 715 BC. He's a prophet to Israel, the northern kingdom. And this is found in the first book of the minor prophets of the Old Testament. So we're dealing with Israel north. And, it's, and it says, The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of Berei. Now you see that beer? What do you think that stands for? In the Bible. Beersheba. There was a man that the Bible says he went to beer. Beer means well or water. You know why they call it beer is an alcohol beverage? Do a search on the internet and how much water it takes to make beer. And you'll be quite shocked. And that would be my well, beer I, my well, his well. In days of Uzziah, Jonathan, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Now there will be seven more kings of Judah. Eight kings since Solomon has passed. And the days of Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel. And the whole book is, is dedicated to Israel. Like Daniel and Jeremiah were to Judah. Here's a book to Israel. And Israel has already gone in captivity long when Jeremiah has come along. So the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, which means... This is just the beginning of the book. And we have 14 chapters. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go. Recognize that expression? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Go and get you out of Egypt. Take unto thee a wife of whoredom. And the children of whore. Now you know who a whore is. And it's funny, you can't, in today's computers, you can't type in the word whoredom. That's a misspelling. we got to give you something else to say. No, I said it correctly and God said it correctly. It's called a whoredom. It is a, a occupation of men and women who are involved with sex for a prophet. And it's not just sex either. It is the assembly and the order of religious and pagan worship. In the Bible, you could be in whoredoms and not have to do with a, a sexual woman. You could be in whoredoms and be serving other gods, idols, images, and what have you. For the land, the land of Israel has committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Like King Solomon, he, he, he loved one wife, he loved ten wives, he loved a hundred wives, he loved a thousand wives. They took his heart away from God and he, said, and he worshiped and built images and he built temples and he built rites to other gods. That was whoredom. And they were his wives. 
So my question is, I, I like to bring the Bible up to date, having a King James 1611 Bible. If God would come along, and, and, and he's not going to, but because the Bible is fulfilled, the Bible's written, the Bible's finished. But if God would send a prophet to his church age, if Jesus would send an angel to his church age, God is the God, the husband of Israel. Jesus is the, is the husband of the church. God is trying to warn his bride. He's trying to warn them. They, they are sinning against him. And he says, go, I need an example. I need you to go find a wife that's a whore because the people in the land are whore. What would Jesus send to, his, to his, the orders for that man for the church? Go and get you a whore? Oh, no. I would say Jesus would tell that, go get yourself a Catholic wife. Because the church is involved in the Catholic traditions and the Catholic ways. And there are some pastors that think they are the hierarchy. There are some that think their church is the only church. Lord, we want to thank you for being in the Lord's house today. And there's no other Lord houses. The land is filled with hordes of worship. What's going on in Israel right now? As we're studying Hosea, there's the golden calves that don't know how to spell chicken. There's the golden arches that are boobies. There's the steakhouses. There's the, the, the calves that are the skulls with their horns. You can go in a Hobby Lobby, at least here in Daytona Beach, and you can go to a full section of dead calves. And see all the pictures of the calves and the bones and the heads and all that. And then, you know, you got the land of Texas. You got the Catholic BC before Christ. That was all the way going back into the book of Judges for Israel. You got assembly of men who are hired to be called father. And they worship the great bull. Now, I'm not talking I'm not talking about the animal bull, but I am talking about the animal bull. I'm talking about there's a god out there called bull. You got horns. And they turn them way away from God like the church house today. And when I mean church house, I mean the Christian. When you take what Revelation chapter 3 says, I'm rich, I'm great and wonderful. Who would, would God or Jesus, all right, as an ambassador of my church, the legacy church age, who would I tell you to go marry? Well, how about Donald Trump? He's rich, he's got businesses, he, he, he's, he's got this woman at his arm. He's got these children, they go out and hunt. And is there anything wrong with that? No, but he's a great idol. So far, the fact is that when their idol did not get elected to president, they broke into the White House. No one's ever done that, but the English, the British. And they burnt the, the, the White House down. John, John one and Adam. And what Israel's doing is they're worshiping other things other than God. And God is jealous, the Bible tells us. And they're departing. And God is calling that worship boredom. And you've already had Jezebel come and go. We're going to say Jehu in a minute. Jehu ended that. Well, he did not. He now you got the woman who painted her face. This is northern Israel. So he went and took Gomer. So we got a, a, a cute little family program. He's a little boy and his father. And I can't whistle it. I'm not even going to try it. Without B, whatever it was. 
And they got a character in there. He went into his own load to be, go into the mix called Gomer Pyle. Now, Gomer means complete or final. That's an interesting name because Israel does not get right. And Israel will have six more kings before the Assyrians come and take them captive. The daughter of Dublin. Now, it's just interesting. As I was trying to find out what Gomer meant, was I found her mother. Her mother means two cakes. Do you remember what Jeremiah said they were making to the Queen of Heaven? I thought that was quite weird. The finish. Of the two cakes, <laughs> which conceived means she got pregnant and bare him a son. And the Lord said, Call him Jezreel. And this is a, a place. Now it's a name. For yet a little while, and we'll have about six more kings, I will avenge the blood of Jezreel. Upon the house of Jehu. Now Jehu was a leader called by God to eliminate Ahab for the sins of Ahab, for the golden calf. Now Jehu did exactly what God told him to do. He didn't do it for God, he did it for himself. As many men called in the ministry today, they're not doing it for God. They're doing it because, you know, ministry is a nice, easy job. Just work Sunday, maybe a midweek, and then you're done. I mean, other people do the job for you. I'm not saying everybody's into it, but there are some who have entered the ministry. I've known a few who told me, well, I'm in it because it's an easy job. They make an easy job because they don't do nothing. You know, I, I, I was pleading to the Lord today or yesterday, being a lad to see in church age. I was, I was just, you know what? You know what made the Philadelphia church age the preacher strong? That preacher, that evangelist, that man of God would get up in the morning, he'd be on his knees praying for two to three to four hours in the morning. We don't do that in the lives and see in church age. I don't do that. All the modern conveniences we have today and what little time we have for prayer for God. So Jehu did what God told him to do, but he didn't do it with the right spirit. And then when he became king, he came just as vile. And will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. So Israel's coming to an end. This is this is again, this is Jeremiah preaching to Judah. This is Hosea preaching to Israel. The end's coming. You say, well, you know, we're in the end days and all that. What prophets God God gonna send? Hurricane, fires, disease, war, pestilence. You're not going to get a prophet like Israel. You're not like Israel. Only Israel in the tribulation will God send 144,000 and Moses and Elijah. You're not going to get that as a Gentile. And you're surely not going to get the Laodicean church age with the mess that the church is in today. And it shall come to pass at that day I will break the bow or bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she, she conceived again. Now, Gomer is a symbol, a picture. 
God uses his prophets in a mean kind of weird way. Uh, Isaiah, go walk barefoot and naked. Jonah, get inside that whale. This woman has three children. These three children are a picture of the condition of Israel. To show you even still that children are of God. And when you name that child, that name of that child is purpose to the people. Name him Jesus because Jehovah saved. Name him Emmanuel because God is with you. Everybody in the family of John the Baptist wanted to name John another name. No, no, no. He, he's pre-named John. Why? Because I love you guys. She conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name lo Rama." Now we can look at verse 8. We got low, uh, 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 verse 9, lo ami. Lo, L O, me in, in the Hebrew is no, without, not. You're learning Hebrew today. Woo! Just taught you Hebrew. And it's not going to get you a pay raise at work. It's not even going to get you any credit in church tomorrow. Hey, you know, I heard this guy on the vid on YouTube video, and you know, low in the Bible means no, not without. Yeah, so what? What time does the bunny show start? For I will know, there it is, have mercy. Upon the house of Israel. So Lo Rahama comes to a meaning of no mercy. Oh, well, what do you think Rahama means? Mercy. There's coming a time for Israel. You are going to get sacked. You're going to get sacked good because of your sin. The wages of sin is death. Hasn't been written yet. And it's going to cost you. Now remember. Remember. Israel as a nation has been broken into three. There is Israel North. Ten tribes. There is Judah South. Three tribes but two tribes. One of them, Simeon, is swallowed up. And then there's two and a half tribes on the other side of the Jordan River, which go into captivity before Israel goes into captivity. Uh, Reuben, Gad, I believe, and a half tribe of Manasseh. They go into captivity first. And as we went and studied the Bible, read from Genesis to already to Hosea, we've already read through all that. We've read through the king. Now, this book takes beforehand the kings that are mentioned of Judah, Hezekiah, this is before Manasseh, king of Judah, the longest reigning king of Judah, and he was the most wicked and the most vile king of Judah, that he got his wickedness and he got his vileness from Israel north. Israel taught their brother how to sin. Woe unto you pastors, especially tomorrow, April 17, 22, when you teach your congregation the whoredoms 
of the Catholic Church. You're not going to listen. You like it. The Gideon? No, not Gideon. Uh, Japheth. The one that, that burnt his daughter. Japheth went out to battle. He said, hey, come on, give me some food. Give me. No, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to give you no. He said, I come back here, I'm going to teach you men. And he grabbed thorns and briars and beat their butt. You wait till God beats your butt. You rather have a bearded t shirted man doing a YouTube video to get right and repent to God before God gets a hold of you and God condemns you. And when you're at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, you can't repent. You can't get it right. You better do it now. Because maybe I am one of them men that God's sending, that he will have the voice to say, You're wrong. But you turn around and tell me I'm wrong. Okay, we'll find out the judgment. And when we get to the judgment, we stand before Jesus Christ and, and I get a well done, you get a nothing. We won't be in our sins no more, so I don't know if I'd be able to say, I told you so. If I get one more time, the Lord said, go ahead and give it to him. I'm going to go one more time. Yeah, I told you so. And hand you a King James Bible. This nation of Israel is involved in Egyptian gods, Babylonian gods, the gods that are around today. Listen, they, they, they're worshiping as Star Easter, they're, and her names are various. God said, I'm going to say, no mercy. That would, that, would, that would come up for the Gentiles today as the tribulation period. You're going to seek death, and God said, you're not going to die. That's no mercy, my friend, when those things are fighting you. But I will utterly take them away. That's going to be the Syrian army, the Nineveh. But, I will have mercy in the house of Judah. They go longer. And they get in their sins. And God sends them a Hosea named Jeremiah. And will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow. Because the bow is going to conquer Jerusalem. Nor by sword. The Babylonian sword is going to come in. Nor by the battle, by horses or swordsmen. God said, listen, Israel, your cup is full, you're done. Judah, I'm going to protect them. The Syrians are going to come in and the Syrians are going to leave Judah alone. Now they're going to get it later. That's no mercy. Now when she had weaned, when well, he got off the breast, able to handle food on himself, herself, she conceived and bare the son. And then God said, call his name Lo. No. Not. Not a. Nothing. Am I? For ye are not my people. Talking to Israel. So Lo am I. No, and am I people? Hey, you learned another Hebrew. You see, when God wants you to learn the Hebrew, He'll put the Hebrew there. So there's coming a time for God, the husband of Israel, both together. You're not mine. I'm done with you. Now, don't you stretch that forth over to today and say, God's all finished with Israel. He's all done with Israel. No, because of the 144,000, there's the 12 tribes except two tribes, Dan and Ephraim. But when we get to New Jerusalem, I forget if it's the foundation or the gates, all 12 sons are there. Don't tell me God's all done. He's...
They're, they're, we'll, we'll read on about replacing the theology. And I will not be your God. Now you are in trouble. Think about it like this. You have got this sore on you. It is disgusting. It is painful. It is itchy. It is irritant. It is red. It is gross. And you go to every single medical doctor. You go to every hospital. Every urgent care. Every family clinic. You go everywhere. You even go to doctors that don't do that doctrine. You go to a foot doctor. You go to a heart doctor. You go to a woman doctor. And all those doctors and all those hospitals and all those, those physicians. I ain't taking care of you. Well, what is it? I'm not telling you. What can I do for it? Get out of here. Brother, when you don't have God on your side, you are in deep, deep trouble. And that can happen for a Christian. And that can happen to an unsaved man in this church age. You got preachers, God loves everybody. God, everything's going to be hunky-dory. God couldn't. Now, there's only a Christian cannot be cursed. But you can get yourself deep in the doo-doo for God to turn off whatever it is to, to, to turn off on you. God told Israel to Hosea, I am not your God. God told Jeremiah with Judah, don't you even pray for them. Remember? But you know, you Gentile, you cream of the earth Christian, you latter seeing goddess. God will love you. All are welcome. God's up in heaven. <coughs> I'll give you the belt bag. <laughs> give me the bar bag that has that church's name on it. <laughs> Almighty Father, are you okay? Uh, the church is making me sick. Jesus, you better go get them before I'm done with them. No? No, you don't think so? Wasn't there a couple times that Moses had to step up to God and say, God, you better not do that. Egyptians will mock you. The people in the, in the land of Canaan will mock you. I will send unto you a prophet likened unto Moses, and what is Jesus doing? He's making intercession for us Christians. No, Father, please. I know. I know. But there are. I think the rapture is going to happen to the point God's going to get Go get him. You know what used to happen? When I grew up as a little boy. There were two terrors in my life. I'd be playing... When I hear it out the window, I hear Stiley! I hear my, oh, Stiley William Hayward! And even my buddies would be like, ooh, you are in trouble! And then there'd be another time. I'd be out playing, and here comes my mother, and she grabs me by the arm. Oh, boy, I'm telling you, I'm in trouble. I was in trouble. And God gets that angle. See, the church thinks they're doing great. Remember Revelation 3? Israel thinks they're doing great. Judah thought they were doing great. With Jeremiah, remember? Israel thought they were doing great in the wilderness. But when God steps in, you are not my people. I will not be your God. Now here, people say, well, see, God's all finished with them. Yet, that's a big, that's a big three-letter word, yet. The number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Go ahead, count them. I'll wait. 
Count how many Adolf Hitler murdered. Count all the ones that got away from Adolf Hitler. I'll wait. Which cannot be measured or numbered. Don't even bother measuring. God says to count them, but you, you, it's worthless to count them. It shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them, Ye are not my God, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. God's going to say, You know what? All right. Repent and get right with me. I'll take you back. See, God is not utterly, totally rid himself of the Hebrews and Jews. Today, they're on a shelf, but a Jew can get saved. That Jeremiah, that, that Jacob's trouble is, all right, pull your pants down, get over here and across my knee, and then you get the knick-knack fatty whack across your hiney. And then the millennium, God puts his arm around you and says, I love you. I just had to do that. <laughs> but at that point, God's got to give them a new heart. Because if he didn't, they would do it again. See, God's not totally finished with it. God's going to say, all right, just shut up with the tears because I know you're going to do it again. Let me give you a new spirit and a new heart. Then you won't do it. Because when we get into the eternal life, there is no more sin. There is no more iniquity. There is no more gods. There is no more Easter. Oh, Easter. There is no more Easter. <laughs> and there is no more Christmas. Oh, I want my Christmas. I want my birthday for Jesus. That's how Judah was when he read in Jeremiah to, to God sacked him. We're going to worship the Queen of Heaven. Because we haven't worshipped the Queen of Heaven. This is why all the troubles have happened. I guarantee there's a church out there saying, Well, you know why there's been problems in the church of the clothes now? Because we haven't had an Easter service. I guarantee it. Ye are the sons of the living God. I got a, I'm glad I got the living God. I'm glad I don't have the statue God. I remember when I was a little boy growing, going to Catholic Church, I remember there's statues all around the building. Not one of those statues ever said, How you doing, Sally? If they did, I would have been screaming. But there's coming a time there's going to be a statue we just got finished and it's going to speak. Fall down, play the music, Shadrach, Meshach, and the go. All hail the Antichrist, or whatever name he's going to be. <laughs> then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. They've been split since Rehoboam. They're still split today. You know, even the even the reign of David, it, 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 there was that Israel and Judah thing. There's one time David's coming back. There, you know, we got ten parts of him. There's been a split between those tribes. Come the millennium in the eternal life, they're together. They're one nation. With Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob there. Gathered together and appoint themselves one head. Well, guess who that head's going to be? It's going to have crowns on its head. Before the one that has the crowns on his head. There's coming the one that will have a crown on his head with a bow and no arrow. That's the wrong one. The one that had the crown on his head of thorns, that was the one they rejected. And they shall come up out of the land. 
For great shall be the day of Jezreel. 